five, four, three, two, one. Please do not change channel. From Krypton Radio, brought to you by Famous Faces and Funnies and Off the Chain with Yvonne Mason. It's the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour. The Internet's premier pop culture talk radio show. You're tuned in, you're logged on, and now, your host, award-winning author and journalist G.W. Pomacher. Who are you hanging with? Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm G.W. Pomacher. Thanks for logging on and tuning in. If you haven't done it already, go on, hit subscribe, and the little notification button so you can come back over and over again, see some amazing... we got cosplayers, authors, filmmakers, comic creators... Entertainers of all kinds here at ICC Con 3, and we're here hanging with cosplayer Rick the True Aquaman Stafford. Rick, thanks for hanging with us, man. My pleasure, Appreciate my pleasure. It. This is amazing. Thank you. Fantastic stuff. Now, we have bumped into you at conventions all year. Yes. I get around. And, and usually in the classic Aquaman. Correct. Um, Quite the upgrade. Yeah, yeah. This is this is so, uh, King Aquaman. This is King Aquaman. King Aquaman. It really was an upgrade. <laughs> See, you get promoted. Um, so, you designed this. I designed this. Uh, it was constructed by Prince Armory out of Texas. It took him over a year, but we sat down for about three months hashing out the design to finally get it to be. And, and what, what is it? this? What is this made of? Leather. Leather. This is this is all leather. Yeah, full leather suit. Wow. Um, that's amazing. It really is amazing. Uh, w- while designing this, where did you draw your inspiration from? A comic or from a, is there a uh, both comic? Well, comic because of the fact that Aquaman is a king. Design from Game of Thrones because all of the kings in Game of Thrones all have this beautiful regal armor, and everyone knows Aquaman to be in the spandex. Well, you know, you've uh, seen me in a lot. Character, yeah, yeah, the classic spandex. But if you're ruling a nation that is, you know, the biggest nation of the world, three quarters of the world is covered in water, that is his domain, you're not going to just be wearing spandex when you're ruling your people. So it's valid. It's valid. I, 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 even around the house, I try not to do much ruling <laughs> in spandex. Yeah, you don't get away with a whole lot. No, no, you don't. Uh, they don't take you as seriously as they're supposed to. Uh, so, what, we, you know, we come to these conventions... I got a lot of Supermans, a lot of Batmans, got some Captain Americas, got a lot of Harley Quinns the last couple of years. Oh, yeah. Um, not a lot of Aquaman. No. What drew you to this character? What did you love about this character? Well, honestly, totally honest, I did not pick it. It was picked for me. Really? Yeah. I was first well-known as Iron Man. I had an 85-pound Iron Man costume. Uh, everybody just went gaga about it. Uh, the group of people I was hanging with at the time all started to go to the DC side, and they're like, oh, Rick, you should be Aquaman. I'm like, I don't want to be Aquaman. Nobody likes Aquaman. You know, he's kind of a second string superhero in the <laughs> Justice League. And uh, they're like, oh, come on, come on. So right. finally. I just was, Jason Momoa, we didn't mean it, man. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> don't take it personal. We moved you up. We're promoting you to the first string. Yeah. So, um, so I actually, you know, I finally gave in to peer pressure, started doing it. And in the first year, it was, it was hard because I went from being a photo darling as Iron Man, because everybody loved Iron Man at the time, uh, to, oh, well, here's Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, let's get photos with them. Okay, all right, Aquaman, if you want to get in there, that's fine. You can get in the sun. <laughs> well, then um, the New 52 came out, a series through DC, and the storylines were rewritten. His character became pretty awesome. And people are like, Aquaman kicks butt. He does, he does. He really does. Now, in fairness, Aquaman always kind of kicked butt. He did, but but he was underrated. You know, I think our generation, I think we got sort of ruined for for Aquaman because we had super friends. Super friends, yeah. And of all of 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 our super friends, Aquaman didn't seem to have the, the most recognizable power. Right, right. So. Now a new generation. We can dive into backstory. We can dive into the Atlantean culture. Now he gets to be a badass again. Yep. yep. And and I've been lucky enough to be riding that wave. Huh, pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> See that? See what he did there? Yeah. Come on, internet. You know what he's doing. Um, 
Iron Man, Aquaman, favorite convention moment. What's the, what's the, just the coolest thing that's happened to you at a con? Okay, uh, you're gonna love this one. I was uh, I was leaving MegaCon uh, in Orlando about five years ago. I was in the classic Aquaman, the black brief version. Um, I do nine versions of Aquaman right now, currently. Nine. So, yeah, nine. Nine versions of Aquaman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're like the Aquaman. I have, yeah, I own it. I, I, I take ownership. So I'm leaving, and a, an old woman walks up and said, can I have a, can my husband have a photo you with know, you? You know, the movie's coming out pretty soon. You're going to have to grow dreads. Uh, well, we're not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm, he's going to do a fantastic job. He's going to breathe a new life into a cinematic character. I'm, I, but it, it it's is, destroying it, the iconic Aquaman. The, the notion. The, the you know a lot of times um, it, it might be something it might be something that's needed but I'm not you know a lot of times we harken back to the visual of something in right. order to give us a memory so if you're gonna overcome the visual uh, Jason Momoa if you're out there you're gonna really have to bring it brother because yeah. you have you have to overcome our preconceived notion yeah. yeah so which means you're gonna have to act the hell out of that character yeah um, and that's hard it, it is it, I'm not unfortunately I'm not having high hopes for it but I'm not a big Snyderverse fan personal preference okay so getting back old woman wants me to take a photo with her husband I walk over I do my poses with this old gentleman you know my my hero pose as I always do and uh, as I go to walk away the old man reaches out and grabs my arm. And he goes, you're just as I imagined you would look. I thank him. I appreciate that. I go to walk away. He grabs me again. He goes, no, you're the living embodiment of my imagination. Okay. Wow. Getting a little creepy, but he's an old man. I could take him if I had to. You know, you get those weird fans. And, um, and he finally says, you don't know who I am, do you? I said, no, sir, I don't. He goes, I'm Nick Carty. I invented Aquaman. Wow. And I'm on my way to a panel with Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, and George Perez on the golden age of comics. I saw yeah. you, and I had to have a photo with you because you, as I was drawing it, are exactly, you truly are Aquaman in every sense of the word. And does that's it, how do, I got my does, name. Does the, does, yeah. Do you get any better story than that? The guy who created your character, you did it. You Spot on. You hit it. You were the embodiment of what he saw when he created that character. Yep. And back again, and and people I think tend to forget as many times it's been redone and and you know more backstory and less backstory and and now again like we said a new look. As many times as things have been redone, here's the guy that invents a character in the golden age of comics, yep. and you hit the mark. Yep. Yep. No higher praise, right? Yeah, I could say it. Yeah, you don't. Get, it doesn't get much better than that. And uh, well, we have a segment of our show. We're going to throw some links down below so people can find you on the web. They okay. can follow you, see what you're cosplaying next, and to see where and when one of your nine cosplays, yeah, Aquaman cosplays are, are going on. I'm actually working on number ten. Working on number ten. Yeah, and from the Super Friends, actually. Really? Yeah, it's a Super Friends inspired version. Uh, Evil That's Aquaman. What's that? Evil Aquaman. Evil Aquaman. So, yeah, with the uh, the eye patch and oh, the uh, yes, yeah, yes. and the uh, kryptonite gun. Wow, yeah. that ought to be interesting. So, <laughs> what we do in this part of the show is we've gone to the internet okay. and we have uh, looked up and trolled some of the weirdest, wonkiest, <laughs> funniest questions, or just some personal questions, so that we can let people know you. Okay, we can let them know Rick. Okay. So, if you had to pull a sw- fill a swimming pool with anything except water, Aquaman, okay. what would it be? Oh, except water. Hmm. Wow, that is a hard one. Other than water in a swimming pool. You know what? I think marbles would be a cool thing to have a swimming pool full of. Don't dive in. Yeah. But when you get in there, it'll be cool. Yeah, it'd just be a kind of... Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, so, you know... Especially today in the convention world, we spend a lot of time on social media, sharing pictures, sharing things, trolling that Facebook feed or Twitter feed. What's the last meme or GIF that made you laugh out loud, that really just grabbed you? Um, It was somebody had taken a poodle, shaved it down to where it just had the pom-poms on the palms and the top of the head, and then painted it like a zebra. And the thing was running around crazy in a yard. And it just, I, Zebra it poodle. Yeah. I yeah. don't know where it is. We're going to try to find <laughs> yeah. it. If we can find it, we're going to spin it up over there. It, it's totally worth it. Okay. So, what do you think 
is the weirdest thing about you just asked a cosplayer what the weirdest thing about him is the internet just looked at me like i was crazy what is the weirdest thing about rick weirdest thing about rick um, what won't i find in a google search oh you won't find it in a google yeah, yeah. I, I put a lot of stuff out there um okay maybe i will find it yeah. in a google search oh let's see weirdest thing hmm Let's see. I am a I'm a I'm a real life aquanaut. I've lived underwater for multiple days in habitats under the water. Really? Yeah. I have over five thousand hours of log dive time. I have. And it never occurred to you to do Aquaman instead of Iron Man? No. And I've also swam around the island of Key West in four and a half hours. I did a thirteen mile swim you sh- around nonstop. Yeah. He is Aquaman. And I worked for Disney for thirteen years as a shark diver. My job was to keep sharks and divers apart. Need you any more proof? He's Aquaman. And, all right, and not to bring this down, and my son passed away, so I do have a dead son like Aquaman. So, so yeah, so it, it, sometimes, you know, fact is weirder than fiction. And so, yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring it down. No, 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 no. I'm, no. Good, I'm You good. know what? Uh, the whole f- purpose of hanging with you yeah. is to get to know you so that fans and those people that are going to see you at conventions up the road get to know the guy that's yeah. inside the suit. There's a guy inside the suit. There's yeah. a dad. Well, and that's why suit. I cosplay. Awesome. I mean, that's awesome. my whole reason for cosplaying is because of him. Because my son, he died of leukemia uh, at age eight in my arms, and he didn't get to grow up. So why should I? You know, what better reason to cosplay? If any of you have a dry eye right now, there's something wrong with you. That's that is the best answer to why a person cosplay that I've ever heard. That's a, a living memorial, and that's, that's amazing. And uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Just, all right, we're gonna. <laughs> I'm not crying. Stop making fun of me. I'm not crying. Maybe I am. I could be. Uh, where are you gonna be next, man? Where are you gonna? Get uh, let's the see. Uh, Infinity Con's coming up. I'll be at Infinity Con. I will be at Space Coast Comic Con in September. I'll also be appearing back at Dragon Con this year. I'll be back at Dragon Con. Uh, I took in a couple of years off, so I'll be back for Dragon. So, uh, yeah, so that's a few of the ones coming up. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, check out those. We're going to put links down below so that you can find Rick all over social media. Stop by, take a look at his pictures. If you see him at a con, stop by and take a picture and say hey uh, and let him know how much you appreciate the hard work that goes into this. It's an amazing costume. Amazing costumes, as we've seen you in several of your Aquaman. Um, And uh, you know what? Now we know more. And what an amazing tribute. What's What's your boy's name? Christian. Christian. Christian's up there somewhere. you got to be proud of Dad because it's an amazing tribute. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rick. As we wrap it up, let's say thanks to our partners and our friends over at Something Unique Magazine, Space Coast Comics, Word Fire Press, Famous Faces Funnies, Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason. And I'm going to take just one real quick moment to say I love you to all my boys. I'm G.W. Pometer. And we have been hanging with cosplayer Rick, the true Aquaman Stafford. Remember, folks, subscribe, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Who's who? What's hot and what's not? 2019 saw some amazing new creative talents, and now you can peek behind the scenes at the hottest indie creative artists in this year's edition of 25 Hottest Indie Authors, Artist Advocates 2019 Magazine, published by the renowned And I Thought Ladies. This is a -a one-of-a-kind look into the brightest rising stars in the creative universe. Get yours today at magcloud.com and at andwethought.com. See Sigilton and Thailand Solution on Amazon.com. Niall McGeehan needs the Lady Catherine Ruthven's dowry to relieve his clan's crushing debt, but has no intention of giving her his heart. With a husband who does not want to be married and believes all women are deceitful, Lady Catherine must forfeit everything into the bargain. Can Catherine mend Niall's cynical heart before the treachery of others destroys them both? Highland Solution by best-selling author C. Sigilton and, available on Amazon.com. This is Cosplay Michael with the Hanging Earth Web Show. I want to tell you about my friends at Embellished Effects in Orlando, Florida. They've got makeup, costumes, and props for all of your costume needs. And the team at Embellished Effects is helpful and friendly. Embellished Effects is one of my favorite places, and I know it will be yours too. I'll see you there. Or go to EmbellishedEffects.com. And remember, cosplay is for everyone. 
from authors Julie Morgan and Grayson Miller, and out of the great city of New Orleans emerges a detective tale to devour. The king of New Orleans is a demon who offers immortality for loyalty. The sheriff is a shifter with a badge who's lost his powers, and Natalia Cortez is the private dick who arrives to investigate a demonic killing. The rest is waiting to be uncovered by you. This dick is looking for a demon fuck. Pre-order on Amazon.com today. In Terry A. Wilson's Slow Burn, Atlanta is a city straddling two worlds. Remington Montgomery is a modern dragon, the city's finest detective and most sought-after bachelor. Day Ito was raised to reign as the Dragon Queen. When fate steps in, these two are thrust together to reign as king and queen. To make matters worse, Day's sister has gone missing, and the unlikely pair must find her. The problem? Well, it's complicated. Can this royal couple set aside their differences and learn to work together? Can they learn to be together? Find out in the first of a five-book series from author Terry A. Wilson. Slow Burn, available on Amazon.com. Mature and curvaceous Juliana faces the consequences of having two online lovers, the insanely jealous Aaron and the kind, sexy silver fox Bobby. To make her life more complicated, she must weather the wrath of her husband Rocco, who has discovered his suspicion and uncovers a deep, dark secret. And there are more secrets to uncover. Will these secrets come out? Can Juliana survive this tsunami of impossible situations? Will she be able to rebuild the life she once had? Or will the burden of the past prove too much? Is there even a happily ever after in her future? Read what happens when you pick up your copy of With All of Me Too today from joannesbooks.com or amazon.com. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome to the Hanging With Web show and the Legend of the Traveling TARDIS radio show coming to you from Megacon, here at the floor of Megacon. This has been an exciting and exhausting trip down the Orlando Convention, the Orange County Convention Center. i got to get that right. Keep on messing this up over here. Victoria's laughing at me the whole time there. Everybody's saying hi to Victoria. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, well, and for those of you who are listening, uh, I want to introduce our guest. She's lovely. She's wonderful. She's a good friend of mine. And she is a very, very, very talented cosplayer. Everybody say hello to Victoria Padilla. Of Cookie Dough Cosplay. You're on Instagram and Facebook, right? I am. I'm on that. Okay, fine. That's why. So the like, Instagram's the best way. Yeah, Instagram's Normally we talk the about this way. in the end of the show, but we haven't gotten to that part yet. But we, I think we already have. But anyway. Anyway, uh, Victoria is a, a premier cosplayer. You are actually with the, um, uh, the group. Uh, tell me a little bit about that group that you have uh, with Amelia, right? Um, yeah, we're a part of AUG, Age of Geeks Orlando. Right. So... We normally just do a bunch of, like, bigger cons. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get into Megacon as a group, but such is life. Uh, uh, we're actually doing Tampa Bay Comic Con coming up. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, that's one coming up. And we just run the costume contests and stuff like that. Aw. Yeah, and, I mean, it's a group of amazing friends, and we all get along. And that's really big, because normally when you get groups of cosplayers together, uh-huh. there's always drama. We found a way not to have that drama, which is wonderful. That, that's good. Drama-free cosplay. Oh, yeah. That's the way it should be there. Now, here's the interesting part, and I know you folks are saying, this is the legend of the traveling TARDIS. Why do you have Poison Ivy on? And for all those folks on the radio, she is in an out Poison Ivy outfit, but you've been you've been in Doctor Who cosplay before. I do. I have a runaway bride. Uh-huh. I made that wedding dress myself. Yes. I never suggest anybody to make a wedding dress ever again. <laughs> okay. No. Um, I also do... Sisters of Sworn, I think is what they're called. They're uh-huh. the ones from the Pompeii episode. Yes. With Donna Noble, so I do that as well. And I also do um, Casual Donna. And uh, what what is your favorite as far as the Doctor Who cosplays that you do? Um, very much anything Donna Noble. I love doing my Runaway Bari just because it gets so much attention. But I also get mistaken as, um, oh gosh, what was her character's name? Amy. Amy Pond. Amy Pond. But the difference between the wedding dresses is hers has a tiara. Right. And it's a strapless dress where Donna does not have the tiara and it's an actual strap. Have you tried to do Amy Pond or you're like, oh, Um, I don't know. I never got into Amy as a companion. She was never really my favorite. I was always a Donna person. Now, what makes you love Doctor Who cosplay? Because you've done it before, but what... It's the fandom. It's definitely the fandom. They're, They're the best fandom I've ever been a part of. And everybody's just so welcoming and wonderful because... There's so much you can do. You, when you see the classic doctors cosplays, mm-hmm. um, not just the doctors themselves, but the actual like, I wouldn't consider them villains, mm-hmm. but like the different aliens. Oh, they're wonderful. Now, what uh, what is your favorite Doctor Who cosplay? Let me put it that way. That I've know. done or seen. Done. 
And you know what? Let's go ahead and add that scene as what well. What I see, I don't remember the character's name, but it was a classic Who. Uh huh. She won Gallifrey three ish years ago. Uh huh. Um, it was a reflective one. And so, like, when uh, we have a masquerade, and they're not an actual mm-hmm. masquerade, it's a cosplay contest. Right. And she tur- they turned off the lights for her and she glowed. And it was amazing. And that, by far, is my favorite. Um, do, you, do you remember the character, where she came from? Or? It was not one of the episodes I've seen. I okay. believe it was from one of the lost episodes. Oh, okay, okay. So my mom was pointing it out to me when I saw that, and I was like, it was amazing. Um, but when I'm done, I'm going to probably say the one I hate the most to do. Yeah. It's just because it's tedious, and it's also my runaway bride. Oh, because of and the it's wedding so gown. Big and it gets stuck. And I've seen, I've seen, yeah, I've seen. If you've ever seen um, people who wear the wedding gowns, and especially I've seen other cosplayers with Don and Noble with mm-hmm. the wedding gown, they're always tripping, falling. Somebody's stepping on their train and stuff oh, like yeah. that. It's just, it, it is a complete nightmare. There. But let's go back a little bit. Okay. What, what got you in the cosplay in the first place? What was, where did your passion come from? Um, God, it started back in 2012. Okay. Um, just graduated out of high school, all the fun stuff, and. Um, I just wanted to start making costumes and clothes. Mm-hmm. I went to my first convention back in 2012. I actually started as a Poison Ivy. Okay. I figure and make a full round. There you go. What uh, comes around goes around. Yeah. Hopefully she'll make her way into Doctor Who somehow with all the crossing over and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, right? That would be interesting. I wonder what the Doctor would do. But it was very much... My inspiration came from actually seeing photos of amazing things people have done, and I really wanted to do it. And what, um, what has been your biggest challenge... In cosplay, what has been the big? What's been the most thing that you might struggle with trying to do as a cosplayer? Um, for me, is the full body suits. Okay. And it's just because of getting your uh, stitching lined up right, and then zippers are a pain in the ass to me. But I, I slowly started conquering them. Now, what, what would you? What would be your um, recommendation? Because I, I, I did a cosplay once, and for somebody who's starting I out, I thought it was wonderful. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm not doing it again. Really good. Look it up. Uh, but but uh, but on serious note, on people who are just starting out in cosplay who probably can't get over that hump, what would you do? What would be your advice to get them over that hump for people who are trying to start out, but maybe if they don't think it's for them? Um. Well, if you're actually trying to build them, there's free sewing classes at libraries. Joanne's does stuff like that, and they teach you how to do stuff. If you're just like me, shy and nervous and scared, what people are going to think. Just do it. Go out there. Ignore what people say. I know that's the hardest thing in the world. But I used to always be scared to go out. And for those who don't see and you're listening on the podcast, I am practically naked. I am in a bra <laughs> and I'm in a um, a really small bathing suit. You have to be. I think our figures just went that. out on the radio show. That's for sure. <laughs> you really need to get over that fear. And just not care what people think. And if you have that attitude, like you don't care, people are going to love it. But if you're scared to start out and stuff like that, start in a costume that's more clothed. Um, I would say to like anything from the Marvel series, like MCU stuff, do stuff like that. It'd be great as a great starting point, too. Uh-huh. Now, people who've had issues with bullying. People have had issues with that kind of face because that seems to be one of the negative sides of cosplaying. How, have you ever had that experience, and how did you get out of it? Um, so I started in California, and out there it's a huge scene. Right. Like cosplays, I believe it's bigger there than it is here. And there are those who think they are the elite, and it's not. It's not cool. Like there's, right. I have a lot of friends who are up there who are famous, and they don't let it get to their head. Right. But you have those who think they are the best. Mm-hmm. One of my girlfriends here, I'm not going to say names because I love her to death, has been going through something like that recently. Right. And it's gotten to the point where she's scared to go to conventions But what's, now. what's the advice you give to her? If you could, if you could talk if to I her right now. Her, yeah. I mean, my easiest thing is it would be the ignore what people say. But of also, that's really hard to do. Find a good group of friends to hang out with at conventions. Yes. Always stay with them. Never be alone if you're scared of people bullying you. Right. And also have that, like, you don't care attitude. If someone's going to talk crap about you, brush it you off. just walk on. To, I vent about it to your friends later about it. But if it, you hear it, act like it doesn't bother you because that's the easiest way to get away from bullies. Because they'll get deterred away from it if you act like it doesn't bother you. And that's the hardest thing about this it is. profession and stuff like that because you have your 
body and soul out there, your mm -hmm. art, and you're putting it out there. When people come in to criticize and you're not prepared or you don't know how to refract, you're mm -hmm. just like, I, you know, it, it, it's hard not to take personal. It's not. It's hard not to take, uh, take rambling. But um, uh, what was? What's the bi biggest joy about your cosplay that you remember? What What do you remember most? When I'm in my snow white and watching the little kids' faces glow. Oh, okay. Like you, I've been called Cinderella, and I just go with it. Yeah. But the moment they he they see you in that gown. And they see you when that, um, how you act, mm -hmm. your voice, if you can change your voice to match it. And just watching the kids' face glow when they realize they're meeting one of their favorite Disney princesses oh. is the greatest thing in the world. Uh, running into friends who recognize you, who you, like, hardly see outside of cosplay right. is, like, awesome, too. It's getting to see people. And the funny part about this is for the people who are listening to the radio, I don't know why, but... Wild Wild West came on and there's that scene on the train where he goes, there's a half-naked woman on the train. He's like, half-naked? Well, I guess we're going to have to stop and pick her up. Okay, <laughs> whatever. But I, I I don't know why it came up. What future cosplays do you have coming up down the pipe? Um, right now, I have a couple of Dragon Ball Z ones that mm -hmm. are in mind. I'm not going to say because I haven't revealed yet. Okay. I definitely have a couple of Disney princesses in the works. I am working on making more of a charity version of, of uh, Poison Ivy to take mm -hmm. out. And I have a couple of friends who are trying to get me into MCU. And because okay. I'm more of a DC girl, so I'm trying. And we're coming to the end of our show. Where can people find you on you the internet? Where's your web presence? Yeah, uh, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, but not Twitter. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Okay. <laughs> We'll work on it. We'll work on it for, 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 for Victoria there, for Cookie. Mm -hmm. Cookie Dough Cosplay. Check it out on Instagram and on Facebook. Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida is leading the way in pop culture fun. From comic books and graphic novels to Funko Pops and collector's items, Famous Faces and Funnies has it all. Rick Shea and the professional team at Famous Faces and Funnies are friendly and knowledgeable. Whether you're looking for toys, props, collector treasures, or a new comic book, Famous Faces and Funnies is your one-stop shop to find Famous Famous Faces and Funnies on Facebook and Twitter. Just type at FFF Comics. The Gift from best-selling author C.C. Giltman. An immortal spirit offers Cassie Calloway, a modern American heiress, the opportunity to spend 60 days in another time as another person, and the free-spirited college student jumps at the chance. In 14th century Scotland, Tavish Ranald must marry. It is his duty. Can he marry Claire Morrison when another lass holds his heart? When Cassie awakens as Claire, her new problem is Tavish. Join Cassie and Tavish as they embark on the adventure of a lifetime. In The Gift, best-selling author C.C. Giltman's Pocket, Pocket Watch, Watch Chronicles, Chronicles on, on Amazon.com. Amazon. From author Sherry Rensler comes the Evening Bower series, a prophecy from the lost city of Atlantis, a pairing whose union will change the future. Magical creatures, prophecy, destiny, and love collide in a new kind of romance. It's Sherry Rensler's Evening Bower series, a haunting and compelling tale pulled from humanity's lost histories. Begin the adventure with time and blood on Amazon.com today. Forever is only the beginning. From author J.C. Lane comes Playing in Tune. As Mitch and Jess set about putting their lives back together, each of them is dealing with their own issues. Life marches on, and Peach Buzz Studios is abuzz with fans coming and going. Mitch continues to record his new album. Brett and Jess's new label, Crash and Burn Records, is about to debut. How will the aftermath of their ordeal impact their relationship? Can their love carry them through anything? Pre-order Playing in Tune by J.C. Lane, book three of the Back on Track series, on Amazon today. Alien invaders enslave Earth. Unleashing hunters into the ruined wastes. One young survivor struggles to elude their monsters clinging to hope. When he's stolen off the planet by a sarcastic starship AI, they, they pit, pit their, their uneasy alliance, alliance against, against a, a treacherous, treacherous galaxy. galaxy. Explore a whole new verse of barbarism and betrayal. Wonder and adventure. In the Scion series. By Michael J. Allen. Beginning with book one, Scion Conquered Earth. Available in print, ebook, and audio on Amazon.com. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm G.W. Pometer, and we are at Indie Book Fest 2019 in Orlando, Florida. Hit subscribe for us, because we have got authors from Indie Book Fest uh, basically for the last two days, which is like four weeks for you on the Internet, because we drop one interview a day. So, Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm G.W. Pometer, and we are so happy that you are logged on and tuned in right now. If we'd, we'd be happier if you would subscribe. Come back over and over again. We hang with artists, authors, filmmakers, musicians, cosplayers, creators of all kinds. 
and we want you to be here for it. We are at MegaCon 2018 in Orlando, Florida, and right now we are hanging with Scott Whipple, who is the... It, it, what does he do? He's Batman. Among we, other things. We... <laughs> The jig is up. We gave it away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Scott is the a cosplayer. If you didn't get that, uh, he's also the national president of Costumers with a Cause. Yes. yes. Um, Scott, thanks for hanging with oh, us. Oh, absolutely. I'm uh, glad to be you here. You look amazing. By Thank the you. Way. Thank you. This has been a 30 year dream costume of mine. So really, yeah. That's awesome. I, I, you know, I love it. It does hark. I love that it harkens back. The grays and the blues are amazing. Yes. Uh, Go ahead and stare at the camera real quick. I want them to see the eyes. and that's This is amazing. This is dedication to the cause. There's a good chance that he's going to trip and fall on the way out of here. <laughs> but if you see that, I saw Neil Adams, the artist, this morning, and he actually signed my belt on the back, so you'll get to see his signature. Perfect. Yeah. You get an autograph at the same time, and the YouTube numbers go yeah, I'm a, up. Yeah, you, you know, I'm a fanboy, too. You know, I'm just a big kid. So I was like, hey, Neil, can you sign my belt? And he's like... Absolutely, get over here. And he's my awesome. boss. He's a great so guy. Let's, so let's let's talk about uh, costumes for the cause. Yes. Uh, tell us, tell us. First of all, tell us about the organization. What do you guys do? Okay. Uh, well, we've been around for ten years. We are a five hundred one c three, and uh, really, when we first started out, we were just a group of friends who would go to hospitals and visit kids in hospitals dressed as superheroes. Okay. And then it spread from there. It started in Orlando. I'm actually from Chicago, so I started it up in Chicago, and we were doing it in Orlando and Chicago. Oh, wow. And then uh, I moved down here, and when I moved down here, they were like, well, you were doing such a great job in Chicago, we want you to take over everything. And so then that's when we pretty much said, okay, we're going to make this a national organization. Now we have a branch in Oregon, we have a branch in Southern California, we have a branch starting up in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, we have a branch starting up in Tennessee, in New York, South Carolina. So we're That's we're express, and I mean our biggest branches are down here. We're in Orlando, Tampa, Jacksonville. So that's where we're at here right now. But uh, yeah, we started off just visiting kids in hospitals, but then we started doing charity walks, charity events, fundraisers. This whole weekend, we're raising money for Faces with Courage, which is a local Tampa uh, children's cancer charity. Wow! So and that's what we've been. Yeah, we we switch to a big charity every three months so we've been raising for them for two months now next month we're going to switch over to another charity but yeah. as as comic culture has yep. mainstreamed in the last t decade really and we will we'll, we'll give the credit where it's due it's the film industry and what they've oh, done yeah. with our properties uh, as comic culture has mainstreamed um do, have you found that it has it, this has become a very good way to help those causes and those organizations, absolutely, We've seen an increase in how willing people are to um, to give to these causes through organizations like yes, yours. Absolutely, they they sure do. And uh, I mean, like I said, ten years ago, it was just friends. You know, we were just friends getting together to do it. And as the see, when you get together and dress like this at the local in your neighborhood parties, <laughs> sometimes the neighbors get a little freaked out. Yeah. But if you put a sign on the garage that says you're raising money yes. to help support a cause, all of a sudden the whole team comes together for yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, uh, even in where I live right now, my neighborhood, they know me right now. But when I first moved in, you know, I'm uh, walking outside my door dressed like Captain America. And they're all like, whoa, who is this guy? Is there police on this guy? But then they get to know me, they find out what I do, and they're all very supportive of Let's it. Let's face so. it. Even if you dial 911, what do you say? <laughs> Uh, yep. I think Captain America is breaking in next door. Yeah, I don't right. think that's going to work. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been cosplay? Uh, honestly, I mean, cosplay, costuming, I don't know. I've been I as far back as I can remember. I mean, I started when I was a kid. I think uh, my very first costume in preschool was the, the 66 Batman wow. for the TV show. So, wow. I mean, uh, you know, I just, I love it, and I've always done it, and I just and enjoy doing it. And just... Continue, you know, and that was that's another thing with the with the with the culture is you know when I was doing it ten years ago, it's like okay, what can I do this? There was really no no resources or anything to go. You kind of had to figure it out on your own. Now there's so many resources, 
you can make incredible costumes. If you see some of these costumes walking around, they're this, amazing. This place is this place yeah. is amazing. It really is. Yeah, I mean, and, and ten years ago, it was a lot of stuff that people are just throwing together. You know, what can I do? Can I do this? Can now, I do that? And now it's. Do you make your stuff? I do mostly. I mean, the, the cowl okay. was made for me. Okay. The chest symbol was made uh, by. Uh, uh, Bat Boy Customs online. Okay. And then uh, the gloves, the gauntlets, you know, I, I made the gauntlets out of foam. I'm actually going to cover them with the cape material. I, actually, I made this costume for Dragon Con, and I, this is just a test run. I was like, I'm going to test run it at MegaCon, see how it goes. I didn't even know Neil Adams was here, so I kind of geeked out when I found out he was so, here. He gets to, he's test running his <laughs> Neil Adams Batman costume where Neil Adams is hanging out, and he's doing it in front of. 150,000 of his closest friends. Yeah, yeah. This is how you test the costume. Yeah, I test it out to see how it'll hold up because I, I'm part of it, a... It works because he's got yes. the autograph. Yes, yeah, I got the yeah. autograph. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you so. do a really bad cosplay, the writer looks at you and goes, oh, I'm not signing now. <laughs> you got everything wrong. Absolutely, but, but he, yeah, he loved it. I'm still upgrading it. Like I said, it's, it's it a It is. It's run. a really, really kind of cool the, costume. The gauntlets are just foam right now, but they're going to be covered with the cape material, so you're not going to see the Velcro on them or anything. So. That's amazing, man. Yeah. That really is. What is the toughest costume that you've ever done? Oh, really? We want to get into that. Um, my first convention costume okay. was Apocalypse from the X-Men. So that was my very first costume I ever did for a convention. So, like, you just went all in. Yeah, I went all out. I was, I mean, I was I was giant. I was a huge costume. My wow. next convention costume after that was Mojo from the X-Men. I don't know if you know who Mojo is, but he's this, he's from Mojo World. He's this really big, fat, blobby guy. Right, guys. With I'm, looking, I'm looking here. He's not that much bigger than me. Yeah. <laughs> you have, like, stilts or something? Uh, for... Apocalypse, I did. I had oversized feet that made me taller. Oh, wow. For uh, Mojo, I didn't really. I, I walked around, but I had the giant spider body with the legs and the tail that came up. And uh, uh, a couple years after that, I did uh, a Modoc costume from the Avengers. And that How was did a, you do the eyes? Nine how, foot how tall. You for for this? Yeah, how did you do the eyes? My eyes for this, they're just white nylons. White nylons. White nylons. I stretched them over the eyes so I can still see. And, yeah. Now, you see, if you're our age... Yeah. Then you know weird science is where we got the idea. <laughs> All right. I, I tell everybody I'm eternally 28. So Amen, don't brother. break that secret. Don't break that secret. All right. There you go. Uh, not counting this particular Batman, uh, and what is the best moment that you've had at a convention to date? With you personally or with the organization? If you, you know. I, well, the best moment at a convention for me would be several years ago. Some friends of mine and I had got together, did the original X Men group but we were in X Factor costumes and Stan Lee saw us and he came out of his autograph signing he stopped it and came out and got a picture with us and that is how you know you're doing something right <laughs> wow that's fantastic how how is costumes with the cost doing over here oh God, we're doing great uh, yeah we I mean we've really grown even since I've moved down here I moved down here three years ago to help boost the, the group down here and we've really grown a lot we're we did. Uh, now, what kind of stuff do you guys do for fundraising? Is it donations or yeah. print sales? What, what kind of stuff are you guys? Uh, doing? It's mostly just donations, but uh, we do have a few artists that do make prints for us, and they donate the, the prints to us. Or uh, tomorrow, uh, one of the artists who donated prints, his name is uh, Jay Bloss. He said he'd be coming to our booth tomorrow to actually sign and sketch artwork for people for oh, a donation wow. at the booth. So that is fantastic, yeah. man. Um, yeah, do you guys, are you guys still, uh, in addition to raising funds and things like that, are you guys still traveling as a group and doing stuff in hospitals and stuff for the kids? We do. I mean, we're, we have local groups where people are local do it. I mean, I, tr I still try to travel out back to Chicago when I can, if I can go out to the West Coast and help the other groups out when I can, you know, that's something what? I try to do. How are the kids reacting? When you the kids love it. it. It depends on the child. You know, some yeah. kids are scared to death of Batman, but... I'm hoping with this one, because no one's really done this version, this is, it's always this the is, black This dark. is one of the very colorful versions. Right. Okay. So maybe, you know, and even today, kids are coming right up to me and high-fiving me, and they're, they're really cool with this version of Batman, because it's not as menacing, really. Yeah. You know? It's still Batman, it's still... Well, when you look night, back at those, at those days... Yes. Um, we had to make... There was, there, there was a... They had a colorful way of making Batman yeah. dark, but yes. contrast to Gotham. Right. So everywhere he moved, the blues and the grays really popped him out. Yep. So you saw, you almost felt like it was all black, yes. but it was just against the moon yep. and it was against the Gotham yep. backdrop. And so um, 
they get when you get more into the more realism where they really right. the shadows the are movies, dark. Really, really the, the, movies. the cinema really drove the realism of the characters yeah. home. It really did. And and when you do that, I think um, some of the stuff that was really attractive to kids yep. gets a little blended into the background because yep. the kids like the bright colors, yes, the yellow they do. and the blue. That's just amazing stuff. I think that's one of the things that made Adam West so popular was it was campy. Right. It was you know it, I, we loved it as kids. Yeah, I know I loved it. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> And and we we still we tried to introduce our little guy to it, just to say this is what Batman was before yes. you got to see it all, and so and that's my shut up card. <laughs> She's not even polite about it anymore. It's One a, of these is I'm gonna turn around out. and show the camera and say <laughs> shut up. You know what are you gonna do? Uh, let's thank our friends. We're gonna thank our friends at some unique magazine, Famous Faces and Funnies, Krypton Radio, our great friend Yvonne Mason over at Off the Chain Radio, Space Coast Comics, Jake and David. Uh, they do a fantastic job of sharing our videos and our creators and our artists. Asylum Convention Entertainment Services, who were wonderful enough to book us into Megacon yes. so we could come and talk to you guys. That's yes. fantastic. Uh, we want to thank Megacon and Fan Expo for bringing in Costumers with a Cause, for bringing in the Hanging with Web Show. And this is the best neighborhood in town right it's here. Amazing. It's amazing. So remember, everybody, keep tuning in. Keep logging on. See who we're hanging with next. The Right of Wands. One boy, one right. And a world of deadly secrets that could change the course of history forever. It's time for The Right of Wands by Mackenzie Floor. When a horrible fate reveals itself during the Right of Wands ceremony, Myrda must find a way to change his destiny. Forbidden from revealing the future, he is granted a wand and magical powers in order to save himself and those he loves. But Myrda is not the only one with secrets. The Right of Wands by Mackenzie Floor. Available on Amazon.com now. At Xavier Dominic's ManifestThyWill.com, do you crave solutions to your everyday problems? Get rich, find love, and become happy. Xavier Dominic, master of the dark arts, may have the powers you need to prevail. Don't give up because other spellcasters have failed you. At Xavier Dominic's ManifestThyWill.com, life does not have to be as hard as you see it. Xavier, an astrologist and psychic, carries out rituals and casts spells conscientiously, and he has the power to prevail in situations deemed impossible by other spellcasters. At ManifestThyWill.com, see for yourself the difference real magic can make. Go to ManifestThyWill.com today. Now on Amazon.com, War Calls, Love Cries, a Civil War novel by Mark Berry. Isaac Wells is an innocent farm boy living in upstate New York. His dreams are shattered by a treacherous brother and the onset of a devastating civil war. War Calls and Love Cries is a fast-moving historical narrative. It is an emotional roller coaster ride and a riveting must-read book that you will think about and talk about for a long time to come. War Calls and Love Cries is the kind of book you will cherish for a lifetime on Amazon.com today. Eye of the Eagle by Sharon Bookbinder. Shapeshifter Burt Blackfeather never plans to get seriously involved with another woman in this lifetime. So what if she's beautiful? So what if she gives him a jolt when she shakes his hand? Phoebe Wagner, an empath with psychometric abilities, gets more than she bargained for with Burt. So what if he's hot? She doesn't need to add his secrets to her own. When Burt's niece goes missing from the Hotel de Belle, he and Phoebe decide to go to Montana to find her. Can two hard-headed people share their darkest secrets in order to work together? It may be the only way to save a child and their own hearts. Eye of the Eagle on Amazon.com today. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm G.W. Pometer. If you haven't done it yet, go on down and hit subscribe. Click the little blue bell. Come back over and over and over again. We're at Space Coast Comic Con this weekend. We're hanging with artists, authors, filmmakers, musicians, homeless guys I meet on the street, whoever I can get in here to talk to, all right? So we're hanging right now with Kimmy Roshevsky, who is a... Now, if you're all familiar with conventions, I just got taken to school. Who is a cosplayer and booth babe? No, we did not make that up, and nope. she did not make that up. It's a it's thing. Been out there. And um, so with the life, life like cosplay. So thank you very much, Kimmy. Nice we to see We have been you again. traveling in the same circles for a long time now. Yeah, quite some time, but it always seems to not quite link up. I like know. there's an interview going on, which is always great to see lots of people getting talked to and spreading what their skills are and their this professions. This is a fantastic creative community to spread out there. Oh yeah, it really absolutely. is. Absolutely. Uh, and I don't think people realize until we started doing what we do that there were so many creative different. artists out there yes. doing so many different things. Now. Um, what are you up to? You're Tonks today. Yeah, I'm actually right. Tonks today for Harry Potter because I got sorted into my own house just in regular Tonks fashion. I was clumsy, knocked the hat off of my head, didn't even fill out the paperwork. And came to class late. I did show up late. She did show up late. That's right. 
So at least for once, this is one cosplay where I don't have to try very hard to personify the character Damn, because it is me. I show up to things. <laughs> the German in me keeps me on time usually, but apparently when I put this on, I can't do it anymore. It can't just disappears. It just disappears, I become huh? the character. I so become what extra been, what, what, have, what have you been doing lately? What, are, you, are you making what, the con circuit these days? What are you doing? Well, lately, I've been doing what we were talking about, our new term of the day, booth babe. Booth and what babe. that is is pretty much that you either promote for a brand at a convention at their booth okay. or you sell for that brand. Uh -huh. So the one that I've been working with is Surreal Makeup, and what I do is I sell makeup. Fantastic. So I pretty much help people add those last touches to their cosplays. And one of the nice things about being a cosplayer is sometimes you know different ways to use something that you wouldn't normally think of. It's like this is day-to-day -day makeup, but you can use it as a face paint or like to paint details yeah, on your body. Yeah, we're just learning with little Cosplay Michael. You oh, know, yeah. That, that, yeah. I don't have to buy a lot of expensive stuff sometimes. Sometimes I can use mom's makeup. Oh, absolutely. To get him ready for stuff. Because I, was, I didn't know that. I was like, you know, I'm looking at all this stuff, and she's like, oh, I can do that with this. And I'm like, no, I don't think you can. And then she's like, oh, yeah, really. That's what it's made for, really. And I didn't know that. I mean, the one thing that's, that's really great cool. about the community, too, like that you were saying, you're hanging with all these different types of people, and everybody's always got something extra to say. Yeah. Like, for example, the people who do photography, they're like, by the way, this powder is great when we take a picture, but when you're filming, you may want to switch over to this one because it picks really? up better. Wow. Because these are the different things that I've learned from cosplayers that I've spoken throughout that's time. That's fantastic. Mm hmm Wow, man. So, what? Uh, what's your favorite cosplay? What's your, oh, of yours? Oh, that's a really, really hard one. I do love Tonks a lot, but I think the best one for me is always going to be my Pocahontas cosplay. Yeah. I grew up with that movie. That was one of the first things where I'm like, I want to be that person personified. I even have the tattoos permanent on my body. That's but see, that's the but that's the passion cosplay, right? That's the passion project. Yeah, growing up with a character that you would love and that kind of like exposed you to something that you hadn't seen before. Like, I'm a mixed individual, so I grew up with a mom that was really light and a dad that was really dark, and all my other friends had parents that looked the same as them, but I didn't have that. So when I saw her in a movie, You're and like, she was tan damn. like me, I'm like, oh my god, they exist! That's awesome. How exciting is that? It is. It's it was, very, it was it a big moment exciting, for me. You know? you know, we see that a lot more now. We're seeing a lot more representation in pop culture. Absolutely. Moana being one of the newest ones. Exactly. That's the one that I just recently started doing. Fantastic stuff out there now. Mm -hmm. But when you were growing up, it wasn't as much. You yeah, had to really grab like out and it. gravitate to something. Like, it was very rare to see those characters. And if so, they usually weren't a main character. So you'd see them once in a while, but uh -huh. not throughout the series or show. But with her, she had the whole film just to her, and her entire tribe was there, too. So I thought it was fabulous. Yeah. And as you see that shift, and you see those characters become more, more representative, it out there. How, how do you feel about that happening? I think it's really, really nice because it helps people kind of who are like me, who feel kind of a little bit on the outs even with their own family. It's not that they were keeping me out or anything, but like when you're a child, you, you're very visual. It's what you see and hear that mm -hmm. makes a big difference. And I didn't see very many people like myself directly around me, and I didn't really hear much about individuals that looked like me. So it was great to have that representation come up. And it kind of gives you something to hold on to, like some great examples too, because it's like, I'm not exactly like that person. So yeah. it's nice to have something that's closer to you where you don't have to stretch. I mean, it's great to use your imagination, but you don't have to stretch so far. It's like a homely well, thing. you know, this is in cosplay especially, and in our community is so great at this. Mm -hmm. And it's something, I was, I was online not long ago, and I was, I was reading a post by someone um, that was looking at different cosplay players and, and mm -hmm. for you this must be a real it's a big deal um, so much of your so many of your cosplays are going to be characters that classically don't look like you yes and so you're going to bend those into a cosplay that you can do and still deliver a performance that you can be proud of absolutely and, um, and, have people always been open to that idea, or has that become more open, or how's it been for you as a cosplayer, a creator, creating cosplays that maybe the character that you're Doesn't doing... Doesn't look so much. I mean, Tonks is very British. Oh, yeah. Tonks is super Tonks is British. Tonks like is super pale, you know. It's almost like, you know, Nordic British, and... And you're not. Oh, yeah, absolutely so, not uh, I'm German, but guys, not British. In case you guys didn't know that. Yeah, um, we'll come you know, but, but wait, as your cosplayer or whatever, has the community always been open to those changes that you're making or, or not so much? Or is it becoming more or less so? Hmm, I will say with this one in particular, one of the fun things is Tonks is an animorph, so she can transform herself to look different. All right, that's So cheating. with this one, is kind of flexible, so when people embrace this, I'm not surprised because I can always be like, oh, well, you know, she can't transform herself, so maybe she just made herself a little bit darker. Who knows? <laughs> but other characters I have hey, to... Hey, that's I will a cool idea, by the way. <laughs> one big difference I will say, though, is... um. With certain characters, it's more so that you have the personality type to go with it. I yes. feel like that has always been embraced. Like, even though I didn't look like... There's another one. She's um, a Japanese character, so very fair-skinned, gothic character, and those uh -huh. tend to stay relatively light in complexion. 
But people still thought I did like one of the best ones because I had candy with me all the time. She loves sweets, wore the exact same outfit, and, and pretty That's much was fantastic. just always making fun of my sibling character. She's about bringing that character out. Yeah. So if you don't you look, look like. the part, a lot of times it helps helps to kind of get a little bit of the haters away. Is when you personify it so well that they can't dislike it just because you don't visually look like that character that's anymore. That's perfect. And you know, that's what that, that's, I guess that's where I was trying to go, is I wanted mm -hmm. to let all the young cosplayers out there know, look, if you don't look like Superman, or you don't look like Aquaman, or you don't look like Tonks, that doesn't mean you can't cosplay that. Absolutely it doesn't mean you can't be not. that character and personify that, because that's what this community has always been about. Oh, inclusivity. Bring your love. Mm -hmm. Bring your love, and, that, and, and you're included. Absolutely. You know, it, it's, this is one of the most welcoming groups of people I've ever been around. And I mean, you can do amazing. both, like, this tone of skin doesn't make a difference. You can even swap genders. Like, one of the plans is um, myself, Lifelike Cosplay, and then Ladybird Productions. You may have met her, Lauren Edinger. We were planning on cross-playing characters such as Han Solo, which is a big classic, and yep. then Lando Calrissian, which there's going to be people who are confused by it, but there's going to be people who appreciate seeing something like, you know, alternate universe. Maybe they went through a time warp or a black hole. You guys, you want to you do, do a Google search for gender bender cosplays. They are because amazing. Because they are amazing. Uh, I, I love, actually... Uh, the effeminate versions of male characters oh, yeah, they're are, so are, are so interesting and so amazing. It's not as much fun when the guys do it because we don't do it well, and we tend to, it's almost a satirical uh, cosplay. But when when the when the ladies do it, you guys do a fantastic job, and you do a fantastic job with everything that you do. Oh, thank you. you know, I we, definitely uh, we, try. We met Kimmy. She was working with Cecil Grimes. Yes, I had actually learned to be a zombie in under a week. <laughs> I was told there would be a makeup artist, and then it ended up not happening. So he's like, can you do it yourself? And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I Maybe, can. Yeah. I'm going to try it. And it, it turned out pretty good. I scared a lot of people. I'm sorry to those of you who <laughs> didn't enjoy it. It was the not news, dumb. With she went her. to zombie school with Cecil Grimes cosplay. The good news is is that if she scared you, she probably got shot by Cecil anyway. Oh, yeah. it's, like the, the, it's like what he does all day long. Is the he amount shoots of guns her. I had pointed in my face yeah. is beyond. <laughs> You usually got to go to a major urban area for that. No, she got to go to a time. con. Yeah. <laughs> Guns, knives, swords, sticks. Baseball bats. All the blunt every, objects. All the blunt <laughs> objects. That's right. What has been the best part of your journey as a cosplayer? What do you enjoy most about it? I this? have to say the giving back is really wonderful because as a cosplayer, you talk to so many others. And like I said, I've learned things from beyond, like from Cecil to learn how to do the, cost, uh, the zombie makeup. I've learned makeup from the booth that I've worked at. And I like to give that back in a way. So one way I'm able to do that is with volunteer work. Awesome. And I've joined Costumers with a Cause, the Orlando branch. Amazing I've gotten to do group quite a few events. Really, and really group. One of the first ones, I believe, was the Back to School event, Hope Now, which awesome. is 100% volunteer funded. And we got to give school items to children. Got cool. to encourage them that going to school is a great thing, that you can learn something. I mean, a lot of people that I've met have learned a lot of their cosplay basics from school. Like they did the little home ec classes, learned how to yeah, sew yeah. in there, or pretty much how to do appliques and everything so I it's nice to pretty much show them that it's okay like some school days aren't going to be the best in the world but you know you can be an everyday hero and encourage a child to go back then they really do get great experiences out of it that's <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing better than that there really isn't you to be able to take a gift and a talent and, and something you're passionate about and pour that back into the community Mm -hmm. and, and you let people know that, it, that going to school is important, you let people know that just being them is important, and showing them that you can be successful just being you. There's no better message than that. Where are you going to be next? Where can they find you up the road? What next con, mm. next event, next place you're going to be? That is a hard one. I am up in the air about a couple cons. One that I was aiming for was Tampa Bay Comic Con. I'm hoping to release my new outfit there. I'm trying to get together Domino. I've seen so many Deadpools, but very few Dominoes, and I think she's a great character. Awesome. And Luck is, in fact, a superpower. No discussion whatsoever no about problem. that you, 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 I wish I had that superpower. It, that's right. Well, if it wasn't for pure luck, this show wouldn't exist. So we believe <laughs> in the superpower that is luck. We have to wrap it up. As we do, we're going to say thank you to our partners and friends at mm. Some Unique Magazine out of St. Louis, Missouri. Space Ooh. Ghost Comics, Famous Faces and the Funnies. Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason. Pound the Grape in Melbourne, Florida. Great place to just sit, chill, have a glass of wine, and enjoy great company. It's like wine. Embellish Effects over in Orlando, Florida. That's a cosplayer's dream, man. They get everything Oh, actually, they need. I believe I use some of their cosplay makeup for actually regular day use when I do modeling. Yeah. I have to cover my tattoos. <laughs> there you go. Fantastic. We want to thank Kimmy... 
Roshevsky. 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 <laughs> it's a complicated one. Not That's British. Right. I should put the spelling down below. You guys will go. Now you'll understand my pain. Uh, a cosplayer with lifelike cosplay and a booth babe at a con near you very, very soon. Come on up and say hi uh, to Kimmy when Love you see her. People. She loves meeting new people. She loves this community. She loves sharing her passion with the world. Mm -hmm. Remember, everybody. Stay tuned in, stay logged on, and see who we're hanging with next. Thank you so much. Kim. You're welcome. Thank you. The Planetary Alliance has fallen, replaced by the conglomerate. Governed by the universe's most powerful corporation. One planet stands alone. Earth. Captain Reginald Epsilon and his ship, the Stingray. A new prototype warship that took a decade of research and development refused to recognize the new commander. And he disappeared in the blink of an eye. An all-out all -out man manhunt for Epsilon and, and the Stingray, Stingray was on. The ruthless Admiral Roth uses Epsilon's executive officer, the stunning Lieutenant Jesse Smythe. And her little sister Maggie has pawned in his brutal game of cat and mouse. Can Epsilon save Maggie? And prevent the most powerful warship in the universe from falling into corrupt hands? Hands hell-bent on destroying Earth? Find out in Stingray You Can't Hide Forever on Amazon.com. At ZavianManifestThyWill.com, do you crave solutions to your everyday problems? Get rich, find love, and become happy. Xavier, master of the dark arts, may have the powers you need to prevail. Don't give up because other spellcasters have failed you. At ZavianManifestThyWill.com, life does not have to be as hard as you see it. Xavier, an astrologist and psychic, carries out rituals and casts spells conscientiously, and he has the power to prevail in situations deemed impossible by other spellcasters. At ManifestThyWill.com, see for yourself the difference real magic can make. Go to ManifestThyWill.com today. Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida is leading the way in pop culture fun. From comic books and graphic novels to Funko Pops and collector's items, Famous Faces and Funnies has it all. Rick Shea and the professional team at Famous Faces and Funnies are friendly and knowledgeable. Whether you're looking for toys, props, collector treasures, or a new comic book, Famous Faces and Funnies is your one-stop shop. To find Famous Faces and Funnies on Facebook and Twitter, just type at FFF Comics. In Terry A. Wilson's Slow Burn, Atlanta is a city straddling two worlds. Remington Montgomery is a modern dragon, the city's finest detective and most sought-after bachelor. Day Ito was raised to reign as the Dragon Queen. When Faye steps in, these two are thrust together to reign as king and queen. To make matters worse, Day's sister has gone missing, and the unlikely pair must find her. The problem? Well, it's complicated. Can this royal couple set aside their differences and learn to work together? Can they learn to be together? Find out in the first of a five-book series from author Terry A. Wilson. Slow Burn, available on Amazon.com. What is in Area 51? Is the government hiding aliens? Elvis? Maybe the set of the Apollo moon landing. Do you know? We do. Join this multi-genre group of authors as they explore the hidden recesses of Area 51, which up until now have only been whispered conspiracies. Don't bother with the raid. Stay home. Read these awesome stories available on Amazon.com for pre-order today. All proceeds will benefit U.S. veterans. See Sigiltanan's Highland Solution on Amazon.com. Niall McGeehan needs the Lady Catherine Ruthven's dowry to relieve his clan's crushing debt, but has no intention of giving her his heart. With the husband who does not want to be married and believes all women are deceitful, Lady Catherine must forfeit everything into the bargain. Can Catherine mend Niall's cynical heart before the treachery of others destroys them both? Highland Solution by best-selling author C.C. Giltanan, available on Amazon.com. Alien invaders enslave Earth. Unleashing hunters into the ruined wastes. One young survivor struggles to elude their monsters clinging to hope. When he's stolen off the planet by a sarcastic starship AI, they, they pit, pit their, their uneasy, uneasy alliance against, against a treacherous, treacherous galaxy. galaxy. Explore a whole new verse of barbarism and betrayal. Wonder and adventure. In the Scion series. By Michael J. Allen. Beginning with book one, Scion Conquered Earth. Available in print, ebook, and audio on Amazon.com. This is Cosplay Michael with the Hanging Earth Club Show. I want to tell you about my friends at Embellished Effects in Orlando, Florida. They've got makeup, costumes, and props for all of your costume needs. And the team at Embellished Effects is helpful and friendly. Embellished Effects is one of my favorite places, and I know it will be yours too. I'll see you there. Or go to EmbellishedEffects.com. And remember, cosplay is for everyone.
Eye of the Eagle by Sharon Bookbinder. Shapeshifter Burt Blackfeather never plans to get seriously involved with another woman in this lifetime. So what if she's beautiful? So what if she gives him a jolt when she shakes his hand? Phoebe Wagner, an empath with psychometric abilities, gets more than she bargained for with Burt. So what if he's hot? She doesn't need to add his secrets to her own. When Burt's niece goes missing from a hotel Bell, he and Phoebe decide to go to Montana to find her. Can two hard-headed people share their darkest secrets in order to work together? It may be the only way to save a child and their own hearts. Eye of the Eagle on Amazon.com today.